Welcome to this VTOA real time to learn user guide. Once the application is launched, you will see this home screen with the ability to play media files. Show a variety of reports. and enter the 3D scene by clicking on the design button. Once the scene is loaded, click on continue and you will see an aerial overview of the site. Click and hold the left mouse button to adjust the view angle. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, or alternatively, use the slider on the left side of the screen. To pan around the area, Move the mouse cursor to the desired location and click the right mouse button once. You can always return back to the site by clicking the button at the bottom of the screen. Content and features are all organized in this menu panel on the left. Clicking on site boundary will display the boundary of the site with the ability to change the overlay opacity using the slider at the bottom of the screen. Under the tag menu, you can display regional tags as well as local tags around the site. Any of these tags can be clicked to move over to that specific location. To hide the tags again, simply remove the ticks. The radius button shows a 5 and 10 km radius around the site. The overlays are structured into Regional and CMAC. Using the Regional tab, you can display a variety of plans with the legend being shown on the left. You have the ability to hide or display the legend using the small arrow button. And as before, the overlay opacity slider at the bottom of the screen can be used to reduce the opacity to see what lies underneath the plan. Similarly, under CMAC, you can display plans, but this time the individual layers of the plan can be turned on individually or all at once or hidden all together using the legend. This facilitates discussions by only displaying the relevant information at any point in time. The LiDAR surrounding button turns on LiDAR data for the surrounding area and the LiDAR site button will turn on LiDAR data for the site itself. Under PSP you will find the land use and TTC UDF categories. Starting with land use, clicking the land use menu item will display additional content underneath. Clicking landscape will turn on indicative landscaping across the site. And turning on the buildings button will enable you to display a legend with the ability to click on a specific tag. And then when you're closer to the tag and the image icon at the top is displayed, click the tag again to display a number of relevant images. Once you enable the building height tool, you have the ability to click on buildings and adjust the height using the slider. Click on the reset building height button to reset all buildings back to default. Additionally, you can also display the SketchUp model. on TDC UDF you will have the ability once again to turn on landscaping and once you tick grayscale you can scroll the menu down for additional options on the key sites you will have the ability to turn on each individual key site with a minimap at the top showing you the highlighted area you can also click the show all button to turn all key sites on at once you can close the minimap with the X in the top right corner of the minimap itself. 
and also choose to display tags and turn on activation being people and cars individually. For University Square, you can demonstrate a number of landscaping options by using the age and type menus. Age will enable you to cycle between day one, semi-mature and mature planting and type will enable you to change the type of trees. You can display these at any maturity level. As a January 2020 drop-down menu, you can choose the constructed option and show the western base. You can also selectively turn the landscaping and activation on or off for the specific site. As well as the train station, once again, including landscaping, activation and also a toggle for phase two of the train station. Approved drop-down, you can choose to show the stadium building, local convenience and childcare, as well as the civic accommodation. You can also explore the scene in greater detail. Use the exploration menu in the top left corner, select ground mode, and double click anywhere on the side to land. Once you're on the ground, you can click and hold the left mouse button to look around and use the WASD keys or arrow keys on your keyboard to walk around. To launch a virtual drone, select the drone icon you can now use the spacebar to gain altitude and the control key to lower your altitude. Using the WASD keys and mouse, you're able to now freely fly around the scene. Press and hold the shift key to accelerate. To take a snapshot of the scene, navigate to the snapshot menu in the top left corner click the camera icon to take a snapshot. You can use the annotation tools in the bottom to create markups, add text annotations and then export this image as a PNG, PDF or email it out directly. Additionally you can also click the video camera icon which will start a recording after the countdown And any action performed until the camera icon is clicked once again will be recorded. You can review the video and save it or discard it as required. Of measurement tools can be used at any scale, for example, to measure distances or pathways. The height of objects. the area contained within a shape, and the radius around a center point. The solar tool in the menu enables you to switch between summer and winter solstice with the ability to manipulate the time of day for basic shadow analysis. To return back to the home screen, click the home button in the bottom left corner of the screen. From here you can also launch CMAC 2020 with the grayscale model already enabled. To exit the application, click on the button in the top right corner of the screen. 